The first home game off a road trip is always tough. And uh, I told the guys at halftime, we're not tired. Don't let the mental fatigue or, or whatever you're thinking about get us uh, off track of what we're trying to do. And, and we came out in the second half, especially in the fourth quarter, and defended like we've been doing over the street. It's fun to be playing the way we're playing right now. And it's fun to be a part of it. You know, guys are going to have different nights, and guys need to step, every, uh, step up every single night. And we need it uh, from everyone, um, you know, whether it's two minutes, two points, one rebound, or, or anything. We, we need everything that we can get in order to win ballgames. What a lovely team. The Cavs are coming together. So we asked the question. This is quick, because first we were saying, what's wrong? Can they fix it? The question is now, are the Cavs the best team in the East, Stephen A.? Well, they look like it because they're rolling right now. And even though Atlanta is on a seven-game winning streak, I don't put Atlanta in, in the same equation as the Cleveland Cavaliers. We know that they're a respectable team. Budenholzer is really, really doing a good job uh, considering the controversy involving Danny Ferry in the offseason. It's a testament to him and his coaching ability that he's there doing the job that he's done because it easily could have been a distraction for that city. And the team has not allowed that to fester because they've been performing. But when I look at the Eastern Conference, I still believe, and again, the big if is the health of Derrick Rose. But if Derrick Rose is healthy, I don't believe anybody is beating the Chicago Bulls in the Eastern Conference. I believe that the Cleveland Cavaliers would have the best chance. I believe that the Cleveland Cavaliers right now look like the best team in the East because they're starting to roll, and you've got Kyrie and LeBron and Kevin Love playing the way that they're playing with Anderson Varejao, with Tristan Thompson doing some things off uh, uh, off the bench. I'm pleased with what I'm seeing from them. Uh, but in the end, I got to tell you this. There's two teams that I'm going to watch out for. If DeMar DeRozan comes back for Toronto, yeah. I'm going to pay attention to that team. And by yeah. the way, that man by the name of Dwayne Casey, mm. former assistant under the Good. great Rick Carlisle in Dallas, yep. Dwayne Casey is doing one hell of a job coaching the Toronto Raptors. They've got the best record in the Eastern Conference. And even though this team that I'm about to mention is tied with the Atlanta Hawks, I'm going to tell you something right now. So Randy Whitman is doing an outstanding job as the head coach for the Washington Wizards. Mm. They fell off the wagon after Gilbert Arenas basically ruined that franchise uh, with, 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 with his juvenile behavior after they had invested over $100 million in him. Uh, it took them a while to get it on back. I was worried about Ernie Grunfeld for yep. a while. Uh, but John Wall is putting everybody on notice mm -hmm. uh, that all these elite point guards that you talk about, let's not forget about him. Bradley Beal is back in the lineup. He's doing his thing. When Nene, along with Martin Gortat, are healthy on that front line, and they have added the closer, a champion, in Paul Pierce, who, by the way, that game against Boston the other night, they went in a double overtime, that big-time shot that he hit for three to tie the game with John Wall doing also what he's doing. Let us not ignore the Washington Wizards. They've already beaten Cleveland once this year. And I think that they could make it. A, they can make things incredibly interesting in the Eastern Conference. So of course, Chicago and Cleveland are there. All right. I'm not sold on Miami only because of the health of Dwayne Wade. I question that. He's healthy. All bets are off. They'll be coming. But I'm not ignoring the Washington Wizards okay. and the Toronto Raptors. Look out. They will have something to say about supremacy in the Eastern Conference when all is said and done. I'm surprised you glossed over Atlanta. Mm. I did. I, I like Atlanta more than I like Toronto or Washington. Oh, I don't. I do with Al Horford back. Yeah. They were pretty good last year without him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I still they don't were. Believe. I'm not sold. I'm not sold. Okay, let's go back to the best team in the East. I like them, but I'm not so. I'm a little surprised because you, you've you cooled on your bulls. You were, you were got, bullish on the bulls for a long time. I'm bullish, but I'm just saying, man, every single week we're wondering if Derrick Rose is going to play. That's why I have nothing to say. Well, but if he's healthy, they're my pick okay, to come out of the East. That, that's why I didn't pick them. And by the way, I Dwayne, don't know about that. Dwayne, what, what's that? Is that? Would you have picked Chicago if you knew Derrick Rose was healthy? Yeah, I've, I've told you from the start. Okay. I just don't trust his longer-term health. I thought you would have picked Cleveland regardless. That's what I'm saying. I'm sorry. No, right. no. By the way. The Heat had a big win last night yes, they at did. Phoenix. I'm not sure Dwayne's back quite right yet, but Chris Bosh played huge last night. So they they can come, they might come a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Back to the Cleveland Cavaliers, yep. who are the best team at this moment in the East. LeBron James was special last night. I was impressed, and obviously I'm never easily impressed. <laughs> but he just flat out took over the game. No DeMar DeRozan, as you point out about Toronto. But LeBron James 
just said, this game belongs to me. And he had his best offensive game yet as a new old Cleveland Cavalier. He makes 12 out of 21 shots. He made all nine of his free throws, some of them big down the stretch. And he made a big three just under a minute left. I think it was 48 seconds left to basically win the basketball game. Mm -hmm. And what, yet what I've loved about him over this, this streak of theirs is that over the eight game streak, his assists have gone up from 6.8 to nine. And I told you when they were struggling, LeBron has to have the ball in his hands. When he wants to be, he can be the best initiator of an offense in the NBA. Beyond Chris Paul to me, he can play point guard, pure point guard better than Chris Paul can play. In part because LeBron is, what is he, 6'9"? He calls himself 6'9". Six, 6'8 six, or 9? 6'8". Six, yeah, 6'8". So he can see over people, and he's obviously a gifted passer. But what I loved about last night's game is that with his team a little bit lethargic for about three and a half quarters, as you just saw him say there yeah. and what we just saw at halftime, he's saying, don't be tired. Don't let your mind tell you you're tired. Well, Kyrie looked a little tired from the start. Kyrie wasn't playing much defense last night, but Kyrie willingly took the back seat last night to LeBron James. Kyrie wound up with 10 assists, so they kind of reversed roles, and Kyrie was happy to sit back and say, I'll only take 12 shots to your 21 tonight because usually it's Kyrie playing the two guard. But last night, Kyrie had the 10 and let LeBron just carry him all the way home. And after Le LeBron made his three, it looked like he was mouthing to the crowd as he ran toward the bench. This is why I came back, which oh. which th this, that was a, it was a cool night. It was a good game again with, with a team without one of its better players. And maybe Toronto will be the factor and force that you say they will be later. But this team is figuring out how to do it. And I got to give one quick nod to Matthew Della Vadova. Have you been checking him uh, out? I like him. Hey, he is their Patty Mills. The Spurs' Patty Mills was their spark plug last year, and they don't have him this year, mm -hmm. maybe until January or February. But again, both of them from Australia. Della Vadova, a little different player. But on defense, he's impressive. Hey, they, they missed him. He missed 15 games with a bad knee. Yep. Now he's come back. He's their spark plug. He played the whole fourth quarter last night. He, he D's up on people, and he makes things happen. He's got a little bit of Ginobili going on where he just forces things. Well, it's an X factor that I did not know that they were going to have. So I'm starting to like the team that well, they're putting together. What I, what I want to do is also take a moment. We were critical. I was critical of Mr. David Blatt early on. Yeah. He's turning things around. Uh, some of the things that he wants to do really I mean if you think about it if they're successful doing it It's kind of brilliant what he wants to do is he wants to he, he wants to attack a defense mm -hmm. while you're rotating Whatever the strong side is he wants to quickly switch mm -hmm. the ball over to the weak side Have you rotate and attack your defense while you're in rotation mode when you look at what he's doing right now The way this team is doing things with such fluidity I have to give him credit for that. He's got a staff, Larry Drew, former head coach in Atlanta, Milwaukee, Tyron Lou, mm -hmm. the lead assistant to Doc Rivers, been learning. I, I got to tell you, looks, in timeouts, it looks like Tyron Lou's doing the coaching. Yeah, That's just me. I'm just telling you, you know what? And you know what? He's going to be a head yeah. coach. Uh, there's no question in my mind about that. I just think that they all deserve a lot right. of credit right now with what we're seeing them do because everybody's playing a specific role. They seem to be coming together. And if we're going to sit there and talk about what they weren't doing now that they're doing it, what they're doing we want to give them some credit so for, for that. a so while give David Blatt some credit for, I, for a while I wasn't sure that Ray Allen would want to come back at midseason to this because it looked like a mess mm -hmm. and now I'm starting to think he's coming well, maybe he would maybe he would consider it's possible <laughs> I, I don't think I person my personal belief is I don't believe I think that he's contemplated seriously retiring, but I don't think Ray Ray Allen is going to retire. I think he's too gifted. I think he still has so much to give, and he's a rarity in this respect. Dude went to UConn, okay? I mean, and then played in Seattle, played in Milwaukee, played in Miami. You know, and he has no problem. The weather conditions, climate, <laughs> he doesn't none care. of that stuff affects It doesn't appear to affect no. him. He seems tailor-made and sort of played in Boston, obviously won the champion. Sure. But, I mean, it seems to, I mean, the, the, the weather walk. does, I mean, I, I mean, yeah. listen, no matter how much Doc Rivers loved Boston, Doc Rivers also loves his golf. There's something special <laughs> about being in Southern California with Chris Paul thinking he could play better golf than you and having some recreational activity to engage in you ain't got that in Boston this time of year but Ray Allen he's one of those dudes him and KG they don't seem to care too much about the weather 
I mean, it doesn't matter where they are. As long as they're balling, they're okay. So I think that helps Cleveland. Okay. Because if it wasn't for that, I would wonder, you I'm, know, where's he going to go? Because you got to remember, San Antonio would love to have Ray Allen. Too. I know, but I... You don't, don't see it happening? It. I don't see it. Yeah, I don't think they need him. I thought you were going Cleveland. He's needed, he's needed more. more. I thought you were leading towards saying he was going to the Clippers. No, no. Well, well listen, the Clippers are a consideration. They would love to have him. They need a three more than anybody uh, because even though Matt Bombs can, Matt Bombs yeah, agree. can yes. defend, they still need somebody else. But I don't know if Ray Allen's that three, but he's definitely a sharpshooter. You got to take that into consideration. You got to take Popovich into consideration because every, every player in the league admires how he manages players' minutes. Okay. They think he's brilliant with that. Okay. But, of course, Cleveland appears at the moment the best to be an ideal situation for Ray Allen. Cleveland or Chicago. All right. Did, did you just explain why you spend so much time in L.A.? That's what I was hearing, well, too. Golfing, I, I was hearing that. Sun, yeah, I don't, I don't, no, no, you no. like You it? would be in the golf. Me, personally, I would love to be in L.A. But, uh, you, you think? You I know think what? I, I just have this You want to be in L.A., too? Maybe, maybe in a couple of days you might just be in L.A. again. Is that yeah, possible? Yeah, that, that is possible. Yeah, I that think is, I just is, gave you that, the that, idea. That, that you may just say, I'm going to I mean, Hollywood does call from time to time. Does it now? It wants you. It needs your services. I wouldn't say it needs me. But it does appear to want me sometimes. Oh, it needs you from time to time. All right, quickly with the gentleman. They need George asked, Jefferson's lookalike. <laughs> we've asked uh, what is the best team in the East, and apparently it is the Cavs. Stephen A says, "Wait, hold on. Raptors and Wizards are coming." That's right. Do not forget. You say don't gloss over the Hawks. Do not gloss. All right, we leave it there, and we head I over to the. I respect them. I'm di 